Hey guys, Nick here, and today we will be getting into part 26 of What If Madison's Family Joined Rick, where we will. Ha this whole episode is going to be dedicated to what has happened with Shane since that fateful day in Alexandria with the Horde, and how in the world he possibly survived and where he's been. And with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Shane basically presents himself to Rick as a surprise to every single soul thinking that he died. But after he surprises him showing his presence, he decides as a token of being an old member of the group, he will explain his backstory as to where he's been for all this time and then reveal his plans. So we are going to cut back to when the Horde was still in Alexandria in that Season 6 original storyline. And visualize yourselves to that moment and when Shane and Strand had Pete and Jesse as hostages. So you got that in your mind? Good. Because here's something that you're going to really need to pay attention to. Go back to that part, revisualize that scene, and... Remember when the both of them, in that instant, it was a quick second, but both of them were shot and killed by Daryl and, you know, everybody else that was on that team, like when they met the Saviors. Well, you see, I compared Shane and Strand, and still do, because they are exactly, if not very close, to alike. But there is a big, big difference. Shane is far more perceptive, cunning, and very much so smarter than Strand would ever be. So in this moment, in a flash, whenever the shots go off, Shane is actually perceptive enough to see what is going on because it's all so fast, but he's able to see not the shots, but Daryl and them about to shoot. So he visualizes, oh crap, I'm about to die, ducks the shots, and pretty much bootlegs it right out of Alexandra as fast as he can, and Strand, unfortunately, he sees the shots too late into his death. So everyone presumes that Shane was lost among the Horde and Strand because they were like, it was all a blur. But Shane, he survived. But he had to go through a lot. Keep in mind, they were both shot in the back by Rick and Madison. So Shane is hobbling, essentially, with a shot in the back through millions of walkers trying not to be seen. And he does so, miraculously, manages to survive and escapes Alexandra and the Horde. Unfortunately, albeit a small portion, and I mean a small portion, because the Horde would be basically around every other soul in Alexandria, because, you know, they were all getting killed, a small portion broke off and started after Shane, gathering others along the road while Shane ran and ran and ran. All he cared about was survival. Think about it. He had just escaped near death after staging a rebellion with Strand and essentially almost got his butt killed. But after so long of barely scraping by, barely eating, sleeping, or drinking or anything, and barely getting any more ammunition because he'd be dry almost by this point, Shane decides whatever he's got He's got to just use it. Whatever ammo and strength and gullet is in his system, he has to use it now or he will die. And if he dies other than that, well, then so be it. Strand Shane attacks with everything 
he's got. I almost called him Strand there for a second because the names are kind of similar. He attacks with everything he's got. Little does he know. He is ran and ran and ran for so long. Yet he didn't occur to him as to where he was. He was in the realm of the Whisperers. He had ventured so far from Alexandria that he had wandered into their camp. But of course he's not going to know this. He doesn't know who they are, obviously, compared to other Shanes who've met the Whisperers. And soon enough, Shane begins to see some strange occurrences with the walkers. It seems like they're reacting in a way that walkers don't react. And soon enough, the biggest out of all of them begins to fight him and even talk and react in... It just... Shane is so out of strength, so drained, that... Whatever processing he can think to do around these guys, creatures, whatever, he just doesn't have anything in him. So a Shane versus Beta fight ain't going to happen the way you think it is. And he is ultimately taken back to the Whisperer camp. Well, he's already in Whisperer territory. He's taken to the Whisperer camp initially, where Alpha raises her shotgun straight at him for, you know, he, he did kill a few of her whisper men even though it wouldn't be a huge bunch because Shane didn't have truly that much ammo or strength but once Alpha raises her shotgun Shane raises his two things because of this one has nothing to lose number two he ain't gonna take someone raising their gun at him and you know let him do it he had enough of that when he staged the rebellion and Alpha she sees everything of what's been done to him without even any explanation. She sees the shot in his back, assume he was attacked, and the fact that he was being chased, which ultimately gave her more walkers for her horde. And it just goes to show that this guy is a fighter. Whatever he had been through, he definitely, definitely, definitely should have died a long time ago if he were a normal guy. Soon enough, he is put into custody for the moment. Well, whisperer custody, if you will. And the whisperers are debating what to do with him. Whether to, you know, take off his head, put it on a pike, make him a walker and join the horde, or join their cause. And Alpha ultimately decides for him to join the whisperer cause. But Beta... I mean, he isn't so sure, but he is way more sure than he was with Negan. Because Shane showed resolve. Everything Alpha said was true. Shane is a warrior. He, If he were anything like any other normal person, he would have died a long time ago, probably just from the shot to his back. So Beta actually takes a way more fond interest to Shane than Negan. He barely even liked Negan. And soon enough, Shane begins to see the ways of the Whisperers, begins to get used to their kind of field, to a degree. And he doesn't really have a choice in the matter, because this is the best he's gotten. He doesn't even know how long it's been since he ran from Alexandria and all that stuff happened. Time has been basically lost to him. So essentially, whatever strength and everything he has, he owes to the Whisperers, even though, you know, he did kill a few of their men. It's the least he could do to join their army. But soon enough, hanging around the Whisperer camp, he meets Lydia, the daughter of Alpha, which he gets accustomed to the names of the Whisperers. But he also notices something very, very wrong between the bond of Alpha and Lydia. Soon enough, Shane and Lydia begin talking because I feel that that field would eventually arise. But then Shane sees the markings that have been done to Lydia. Now, he had already known about what Alpha liked to do to increase the strength of her army and herself, using a whip and doing the markings and everything. She did it with Negan, too. But seeing 
and not knowing the fact that this was done to her own daughter brings back all of the memories of number one, Ed, number two, Pete, and number three, everything that happened in Alexandria, which he was trying so hard to forget while he was in the Whisperer camp. And soon enough, he begins to see that there's only one option for Alpha, and that's death. Even though all he need, owes is to her, he will not accept this. The fact that another poor soul is being abused. And, yep, pretty much brings back all of his, all of Shane. Any part of Shane that was lost and done, Shane's back. And soon enough gets Alpha on her own, whenever he gets enough on her good side. Not like Negan, he wouldn't drag it out that long. But he does get her on her own eventually. And kills her. And after this, because it would be with a gunshot, he wouldn't... I don't really know Shane to use melee weapons. But he would get her on her own and kill her. And hearing the gunshot, the Whisperers start to panic, think they're under attack. Beta is the closest one because he would always be the closest to Alpha's shack. And goes immediately and brings out his knives to see Shane holding a gun at him, saying that if he makes a move, makes a slight, you know, signal to other whispers, and does anything to attract attention, he'll kill him too. He has killed Alpha because he found out what she was doing, and the way she's been taking control of this camp and her own daughter and everything else, that's going to change now, and Shane will be the new leader. And he took it by force. And he will show that he could be a better Alpha than Alpha ever was. An actual leader. Now, Beta, of course, is still very angry at this because he genuinely cared for Alpha, albeit disagreeing with her on many levels. But then the part of his mind goes to the fact that Shane really, really has impressed him. He can't believe that he is even thinking this, but the fact that he already proved so much before he even joined the camp, and that he took initiative to what Alpha did wrong, and that he's showing authority to right the wrongs and make a better leader of the Whispers than she was, shows that it basically makes Negan, like, Alpha, like, whenever Negan was proposed maybe to be the alpha basically makes that a joke because beta actually thinks that he would make a good alpha not to say that he thinks that he would make a better alpha but he's not disagreeing with shane so he ultimately doesn't agree with him but he stands down soon enough the word spreads that alpha has been killed by shane and you know of course the news would spread because Beta would tell the group, and the gunshot, he would have to. And Lydia is obviously not happy about this, because it's her mom. And even if it was for the greater good, like, why did Shane truly do it? And Shane says this to Lydia specifically. It was because specifically of what she did to her. He had been through too much already, and seen too many people like Alpha that he couldn't stand around and let another person suffer abuse like other people have, and explains his full story on what happened and why he is where he is now, and that he is going to change, basically, he's going to make this group what he should have been in, the group that he wanted to be in, make it better, essentially, if that makes sense. Be in a group that's better than the group he was in. And Lydia truly appreciates this. She doesn't fully forgive him for killing her mom, but she does really understand where he's coming from and looks to her and looks to Shane like the dad she never had, essentially, even though it's a whole deal, really. And Beta, albeit very reluctantly at first, begins to slowly accept the fact that Shane is the new Alpha. And soon enough, that very reluctance turns into small reluctance. 
and then ultimate loyalty. Because Beta ultimately sees Shane as a way, way better alpha. And Shane, he begins to take the role very seriously and says that whatever rules that Alpha had in play, whatever made her the Alpha, whatever things she put in rule to this camp is going to change tenfold. He will ensure that the Whisperers are 10 times, 20 times, 30 times what they were originally. He will make the Whisperers an unstoppable ultimate army and actual community that will be better than what Alpha had it at. And soon enough, the effects of what Shane has to offer are put into play. First off, the babies will be safe in the community, the, the Whisperer camp, and will never be brought out. Because remember how Francis brought her baby to Hilltop? Whenever Shane goes to Hilltop, like at the beginning of this episode and like the end of last, Francis won't have her baby there. So... That's going to be out of the equation. Now we're going to talk about Shane's weaponry first. As for his favorite pistol, of course he's still going to have that. But for the longest time, even after he left Alexandria and before he joined the Whisperer camp, the pistol's been empty. But soon enough, beginning to scout once more and regaining his strength, he gets way more than enough to load up his pistol to maximum capacity. And effectively is able to use it again. Now, we're going to talk about a very important upgrade to Shane's favorite shotgun, because I'm going to take a page out of fear and actually make Shane combine a weapon with a weapon, essentially. Now, what might that be? Well, he's not going to get an axe, like, pull spear like Morgan, obviously, he will combine his shotgun with Alpha's shotgun to make a automatic, ultimately compacted shotgun, if you will. Something that would make Shane's shotgun look like a joke. It adds in the features of Alpha's shotgun to Shane's, and he makes it so that it's automatic. Like... A shotgun that you would see like in a Resident Evil game or something like that. I know it sounds a little silly, but <laughs> I feel that Shane would definitely apply himself to the task. And Beta? <laughs> Whatever power Beta had before, him and Shane trained basically every day, being very adept in fighting each other and actually enjoying it. And... It's not like a Dragon Ball fight or martial arts. This is genuine sparring to test out their resolves. And Beta is made ten times the powerhouse. And not just uses his two knives this time, but is effective in way more melee weapon ar artillery. And a few sidearms. But I feel that Beta would mainly use melee. Speaking of which, weapons are soon enough scavenged and held out to the people at the Whisperer camp, making them an effective army in case an ambush was to come. And Shane, oh, he is having almost the time of his life dedicating himself to being the ultimate leader of the Whisperer camp, basically wishing that Alexandria and everybody else wishing that they had been like this. And soon enough, those thoughts just start to bubble up in his mind, and they begin to consume him. And then ultimately, when the thoughts seem to be consuming his mind so much that he's like half building the Whisperer army and half getting these thoughts in his head like the crazy Shane we know him to be, Shane hears of an event a long time in the future. This would be into Season 9 territory, catching up with the timeline. And he hears of a group that has killed a decent few of his men. And he begins to think, this can't be Rick, can it? Rick and Madison? Have they finally found him? Or is this just like 
just running into them randomly. It could have just been an ambush because there's no way that they could know that he was part of the army. And he smiles at this because there is actually no way. And he decides to go and check it out for himself, whether it's Rick and Madison or whether it's another group that needs to be put under the power of Shane the Alpha. And he tells Beta that he is in charge of the Whisperer camp until he returns. Beta, of course, pledges undying loyalty at this point in the series to Shane, viewing him as 10, 20, 30, 50 times better, the Alpha, than Alpha ever was. So he says this without a shred of betrayal or anger in his voice. This would be a very changed Beta. And soon enough... We cut back to the scene where Shane reveals himself after taking off Alpha's mask and reveals to Rick the ending of the story and says that he is here. At first, he was just going to take the camp that had basically killed his men and just killed all of them or made him part of the horde, essentially. But now that he knows that it's Rick and Madison who have come back to haunt him, essentially, he will make absolute sure that the rebellion that he had planned with Strand all those years back will actually be sieged this time, and he will get the revenge that he had been wanting to all these years. But will he succeed, or will this be a short-lived reveal for Shane coming back to the group? And that's where we leave things for the moment. Hope you guys enjoyed this exceedingly long episode and backstory as to why Shane would possibly be alive. I know it's a little wrong not to have included Strand in the Whisperers, but honestly, I think I explained that enough self-explanatoryingly that Shane would definitely fit the alpha rule and yeah, Strand could have been the beta too, but I think it ultimately worked out. What are your thoughts on the episode and the backstory? Leave a comment, like and subscribe, and see you guys in the next part.